Uh, all right, back to my old couch. Anyway, last episode I spotlighted a shameless Turkish knockoff, so this time around I'm going to review a movie that's totally original. Well, almost totally original. <laughs> Challenge of the Tiger is a 1980 martial arts movie that, assuming you've even heard of it at all, chances are it's because it was released on a double bill DVD with the infamous Filipino exploitation flick For Your Height Only, a James Bond spoof featuring 2 foot 9 inch actor Wang Wang. <laughs> Well, this movie may not have many James Bond, but it does star Bruce Lee. That's Lee with one E. This guy. Yeah, Challenge of the Tiger is one of several Bruce exploitation movies that attempted to cash in on the iconic actor's untimely death, featuring Bruce Lee impersonators like Bruce Lee with one E, Bruce Lee with an I, Bruce Lie, Bruce Tie, the list goes on and on. But, in addition to acting in this movie, Bruce also co-wrote and directed it. So I guess we can assume that he's imitating Game of Death Bruce Lee here. Who knows, maybe this means he'll have to use the real Bruce Lee as his stand-in for most of the movie. Anyway, I better get started. Looks like Lex Luthor and John Lennon are about to discover something big. I finally got it! Are you sure it's the real thing this time, Professor? Yeah, that's a laugh. This movie talking about giving us the real thing. This new type of sterilizer does kill the sperm totally. This formula can also be used on human beings. But it must not be used in the wrong way. We must be very careful. Yeah, because if it were used the wrong way, it could... not kill sperm? You know, call me crazy, but I don't think contraceptives count as weapons of mass destruction. Oops, apparently I was wrong, since literally seconds after they discover it, terrorists come in and steal it. Okay, well I guess I can't accuse this movie of being slow moving. That was literally just the first minute. Shit, I guess this must be serious. They contacted Richard Attenborough from Jurassic Park. A Spanish professor invented a new type of sterilizer which can kill human sperms totally. Now that formula is priceless. You imagine it in the wrong hands. Okay, I still don't know what the big deal is. All they did was invent spermicide, which by the way, already existed at the time this movie was made. That's bad. This formula must not fall into the hands of terrorists, or they could blackmail the whole human race. My god. If this were to be unleashed upon the world, men would be able to have all the sex they want with absolutely no repercussions. Which is bad, somehow. Anyway, getting on with the main plot, I can't believe it's not Bruce Lee here plays Wong Lun, a special agent whose line of work is so dangerous he can't even walk down the street without getting randomly attacked by goons. His partner is played by Richard Harrison, and good news, I think this is one of the martial arts movies that Richard was actually aware he was in. Richard plays another special agent called... um... And the other one's Wong's partner, Richard Cannon. Wait, 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 wait. Richard Cannon? The guy's name is Dick Cannon? <laughs> Alright, well with a name like that, I'm guessing he's probably either a porn star on the side, or some super rich guy who lives in a mansion constantly surrounded by naked women. Hi! <laughs> My goodness. What a party this is. <laughs> okay, I guess that answers that. He's helped us crack the toughest cases in the past. The only problem is that he fools around too much with women. Yeah, it's a problem for every guy that isn't him. Look at this, it's like the guy lives in an X-rated beer commercial. Oh, uh, I don't have a joke here, I just wanted to show that. I got to see it without the black boxes. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that this movie has so much sex in it. After all, one of the writers was a huge Poon fan. Okay, so let's recap. So far we've had a terrorist assassination, a kung fu fight, and topless tennis. Um, just how far in are we? Okay, just checking. Mr. Cannon, 
There's a call for you from Mr. Wong. Oh, damn it. Can't he see I'm busy being the real most interesting man in the world? Wong tells Richard they've been contacted for an important mission, and you can tell Wong's a top agent by the way he inconspicuously follows the bad guys by driving five feet behind them. You can also tell Wong's a master of kung fu because he has to go up against such martial arts masters as an Italian construction worker, Stacy Keach, and that douchebag that wouldn't let me into his fraternity in college. Damn it, Richard, quit standing there showing off your porn stash and help him already! Oh, never mind. I guess he's there to take care of the snipers. Wait, what? Okay, so we've just had another kung fu fight and now a gunfight. How far in are we now? Okay, got it. But your intelligence is all wrong. Because this is certainly not their meeting place. Yeah, the fact that they had a shit ton of goons and snipers waiting for us here is proof of that. Turns out the real meeting is at a bullring. I'm guessing because one of the producers knew a guy who owned a bullring and he said they could film there. Uh-oh. Looks like Sophia Loren is up to something shady. Looks like these two are gonna have to use every bit of cunning and stealth to- Oh, never mind. Fight scene. Well, I can't say these two aren't good at their job. They've just started their mission and they've apparently already killed the bad guy. What the hell? Wong's kung fu fighting a bull now? We're not even 15 minutes in! Jesus, at this rate, by the half hour mark, these two are gonna be wrestling dinosaurs in outer space! You know, I would say that was animal cruelty, but considering that was probably a quicker death than what that bull would have normally gotten, I'll let it slide. Apparently this woman now has the formula. Um, who is this character? Uh, this is Maria. She's in charge of the PR department. <laughs> wow, I think that's the first time I've ever heard a dub actor almost forget his lines. I've got some very good news for you. We have two distinguished guests here tonight. They're Miss Spain 1982. Ooh. Maria! Hey, Miss Spain 1982. That's pretty impressive considering this movie was made in 1980. Well, looks like it's up to Dick Cannon to seduce her and try and get the formula back. Time to put on the charm. Can I come home with you? Smooth. I guess that's why he's Cock Hammer. I mean Dick Cannon. Let's relax, we got plenty of time. You know he's right. We're still not even 20 minutes in. This movie is like if they tried to cram every James Bond and Bruce Lee film into 90 minutes. At this point, I'm not even really sure what the plot is anymore. Something about terrorists and spermicide? I don't know, in between the slow-motion tennis titties and cartoon bull executions, I guess I just kind of lost track of things. Maria, I really like you. Man, where does he come up with these smooth lines? I need less talk. I admire women that are straightforward. Mainly, I admire the fact that this allows me to fuck them faster. Okay, so the plan is Richard distracts Maria by having sex with her in a hot tub while Wong searches her place for the formula. I am also guessing Richard's the one who came up with this plan. Yeah, okay, fellas, a uh, couple tips. If you want us to believe that that dog is angry, one, make sure the dog actually looks angry. Two, don't dub over it with an angry cat. Damn, Richard's such a player, he comes with his own porn music. Uh-huh, I see you there, wishing you were me. But guess what? You can't be me, because there's only one Dirk porn stash. I mean, Dick Cannon. Hey, don't get mad at him just because you're not getting any action. You're the one who wrote and directed this thing. Wong finally finds the formula in a hat or something. I don't know, I'm still not exactly sure what's going on. And I guess the formula must be more important than I thought, since Maria's bosses instantly know it's gone. You should have realized. The importance of all this. Now we've lost it. Hey, hey, take it easy, man. We still got the formula for Astroglide. We could try taking over the world with that. Hey, congratulations, Richard. You got the formula, nailed Maria, and now you don't even have to talk to her afterwards. Job well done. Okay, they got the formula, so... Does that mean the movie's over now? I know we're not even 30 minutes in, but considering how fast this movie's been going, it wouldn't surprise me. The mission is not completed. Wong, you need to leg wrestle a shark. Dick, you need to seduce and have sex with the world's hottest albino. You got about five minutes to do both, now go. 
You got the fake formula. I had it tested in the laboratory. And it's just Spanish fly. No, no, you tested Richard's mustache grease by mistake, you idiot. So it turns out Maria still has the formula. Oh yeah, did I mention Maria's still alive? It turns out she actually faked her death, although I really have no idea why. I guess you could argue that she did it to buy herself some time and throw these guys off her trail, but it doesn't. At all. It's not like there's a part of the movie where these two find clues and gradually figure out that she's still alive. As soon as it's revealed that the formula's a fake, these two just automatically assume that she's still alive and has it. She could have just let them leave thinking they had the real formula and the result would have been exactly the same. Also, how the hell did Richard not notice there was no bullet wound? Never mind, I guess Richard isn't interested in any holes on a woman he can't fuck. Anyway, it turns out a lot of countries are interested in buying the formula because... Uh, they hate sperm? Well, I guess that means we can rule out any Catholic country since we know what their stance is. Oh, and just in case you thought this movie didn't already have enough going on, there's also a group of Vietnamese spies who want the formula too. Thankfully, our heroes are on the case and know the formulas in Hong Kong... somehow. Hey, there's a lot of pretty girls in Hong Kong. Yeah, you know anyone here? Hey, don't worry, Richard. Your pee will be burning before you know it. See? They even sent you an attractive contact. I'm CIA 08. I'm Anna. We're 05 and 06. Yeah, they would have sent 007, but he was busy battling Hugo Drax in outer space at the time. Also, apparently road rage is a serious problem in Hong Kong. I think they've done this on purpose. Don't panic. Our friend will handle it. He does all the fighting while I get all the women. It's a great partnership. And that's why I'm the world's greatest martial artist. Impersonator. While this is going on, Maria meets up with some other enemy agents, like a walking collection of steroids with some sunglasses attached, and a guy who looks like he probably owns a van and spends a lot of time hanging out at playgrounds. But our heroes can't stop him just yet. After all, it's three o'clock. Time for their afternoon tea. Hey, that tea smells good. Yeah, so does she. <laughs> oh, another smooth line. And that's why he's Brick Foreskin. I mean Dick Cannon. Besides Maria and her associates, there must be somebody else who'd like to get hold of that secret formula. I suspect the Viet Cong are involved too. I know, because I wrote them into the script. Okay, you've got multiple enemy agents after the formula, but that doesn't mean you can't spend some time at the beach. Besides, it turns out Dick Cannon's such a chick magnet that enemy agents are literally tripping over themselves to try and sleep with him. Looks like it's time for Richard to work his magic and- Whoa! Jesus, Richard! Okay, we get it. Your name is Dick Cannon. You don't need your swimsuit to advertise that for us, too. <laughs> See? That proves I can fight, too. Anyway, sex now? You twisted your ankle just now. Shall I take you home? I think I was supposed to be trying to find some terrorists who are threatening the world or something, but I'm sure it can wait. He thinks he's Don Juan. Uh-uh. He knows he's Dick Cannon. And he's about to give this Viet Cong a mustache ride out of Saigon. I was lucky you were there. Otherwise, it'd have been terrible. Yeah, I would have had to sleep with that doofus who thinks he's Bruce Lee. Are you happy to be with me? Of course I am, darling. Oh, uh, I probably should have let you know this earlier, but the real reason I'm called Dick Cannon is because I have a habit of exploding prematurely. <laughs> By the way, first rule of exploitation filmmaking, always follow a sex scene with even more gratuitous nudity. Meanwhile, we see the other enemy agents, um... Listening to music and working out. Jesus, this guy is like the Incredible Hulk if he was played by Elliot Gould. Thankfully, the guy the Viet Cong send to get the formula is Bolo Young, the only guy with a physique as scary as this guy's. I'm serious, man. Don't mess with Chong Lee or he'll kick you in the throat and then stand there and watch you die. Or just run away. One of those two things. I think the reason he's leaving is because he just realized he showed up to this fight wearing his underwear. Well, they're gone. Scene over. Let me see, what am I looking for again? Something about spermicide? I better check the script. What are you doing? Oh shit, that enemy agent Dick slept with is really an enemy agent. Oh, right in the dick cannon. 
Well, don't worry, Richard. Bruce will take care of things. And by that, I mean lose the fight and let the bad guy get away. Can't say I really blame him, though. Considering this is like the seventh fight he's been in in less than 24 hours, he's got to be pretty exhausted by now. Hmm, let's see. Is this where I left all my clothes? Can't seem to remember. Comrade Pan, you know our rules. Failure means death. Hey, he meant for you, not them. Whatever. Apparently the movie's gone all the way with the whole Bruce-ploitation thing and it's decided to become Enter the Dragon. Nope, oh, my mistake. It's actually the beginning of Predator. Well, this is our production facility. Uh, all the equipment is imported from overseas. They're ready to go into production uh, as soon as the formula comes out. Okay, great. So all the workers there won't need vasectomies. How exactly is this supposed to threaten the world again? Come to think of it, why do they even have a production facility? I thought they were just trying to sell the formula to the highest bidder. Shouldn't it be up to whoever buys it to manufacture it? Why do they have to make it for them too? And if they are going to manufacture it, wouldn't they make more money just by patenting it and selling it in stores? God, I have so many questions for this movie. And they're gone. Thanks, movie. <laughs> so we succeeded last! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention they're also Nazis. Probably because the movie did too. Meanwhile, Richard and Wong go to Macau because... I don't know, maybe the producers decided to spend the last 50 bucks of the movie's budget gambling. You know, I'm beginning to think that these two aren't actually secret agents and are just using this assignment as an excuse to go on vacation. Anna's quite a smart girl. You know, in some ways, this job's easier for a woman. Yeah, for starters, their parts are smaller, which means they don't have to learn as many lines. While in Macau, our heroes attend a gathering featuring celebrities like Morgan Fairchild, Jack Klugman, and Jane Seymour who, if I had to guess, were probably filmed without their knowledge and have no idea they're even in this movie. Hmm, would this count as cameo exploitation? What would you like, sir? Uh, Coke, please. Yeah, I think Coke was how Richard Harrison was convinced to do this movie. So, uh, this movie is still about terrorists trying to sell spermicide, right? Or are we just watching the filmmaker's vacation footage now? Oh, never mind, fight scene. I guess that's what I get for thinking this movie had a coherent plot. Mm -hmm. Hey, Richard, what happened? Oh, sorry, I was just taking a nap until my next sex scene. Where's Anna now? I, I, I don't know, uh, must have taken her. What? Anna's been taken? When the hell did this happen? I didn't skip over anything here. Last time they showed her, she was just sitting in the stands. Then after Bruce's fight scene, they just suddenly say the bad guys took her. Even though when they show the bad guys leaving, she's nowhere to be found. What, did the actress have to buy groceries that day and Bruce didn't feel like shooting another scene? Come to think of it, they don't even show Richard getting knocked out. Look, at the beginning of the fight, he's not there. Then at the end, he's suddenly passed out by the car. They couldn't film one shot of Richard Harrison getting punched or something? Priorities, Bruce! Priorities! Ugh, anyway, these two get a message from the Vietnamese spy who knows where Anna is because... Wait, how does she know where Anna is? Anna was taken by Antonia's men. How do you know? No need to know. Yeah, mainly because Bruce forgot to write a reason into the script. Anyway, if you want to save her, just follow this map. I'm pretty sure that's just a map of Epcot, but whatever. Wait a second, why is she helping them anyway? I thought she was an enemy agent too. Well, I guess one night with Richard was enough to convert her. And that's why he's Schlong Vag Pounder. I mean Dick Cannon. Hey, this is encouraging. They're acting out my favorite scene from Chinatown. What do you want to know? Who is with you? What do you mean, who was with her? Didn't you see? It's not like they were wearing disguises or anything. I thought the whole reason you kidnapped Anna was because you saw her with the secret agents that have been trying to stop you. So then, you just kidnapped some random woman in the crowd you thought looked suspicious? Okay, does anybody in this movie have any idea of what they're doing? Anyone at all? Hey, untie her! She wasn't tied up, but okay. Unfortunately for them, Anna kills herself before they can get any info out of her. Of course, she probably couldn't have told them anything they shouldn't have already known, but still, that shows dedication to being a secret agent. Damn, it! Damn Leopard's so strong he kind of dented that cardboard box. I hear he can snap a pencil in half using only two hands. Well, you didn't learn that Anna was with the guys that you saw that she was with. Looks like you'll have to be content with having the formula. If that's even still a thing anymore. At this point, I don't even think the movie knows. What now, then? Let's split up. You look for guys to beat up, and I'll see if there's any hot women I can have sex with. 
Whoa, 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 Richard, what do you think you're doing? The skinny Asian guy's supposed to do all the fighting. Oh, shit, even the cameraman's trying to kick his ass. Oh, my mistake, it's actually... Bon Scott? I don't have time to play. But I suppose if you want blood, you've got it. Well, at least now I know how Bon Scott really died. It was by getting his head crushed in between Richard Harrison's thighs. Well, Richard, you okay? You bastard, you always come behind me. Yeah, I'm always doing the fighting. Since about two minutes ago. Hey, boss. These guys are all CIA agents. You know, maybe if you'd bothered to give your henchmen guns instead of just one afternoon Taekwondo class, you wouldn't be in this situation. Well, looks like it's time for the climactic fight scene with the bad guys. Uh, yeah, I think that guy was on your side, Leopard. All right, Bruce, let's see if your kung fu is a match for Leopard's roid rage. Prepare to enter the imitation dragon. Yeah! Yeah! Ah, unfiltered sunlight, my one weakness! So while Wong takes care of Leopard, Richard fights Kong, and okay, I guess Wong's fighting him too. Come to think of it, where is Richard? Wong's doing all the fighting, and once again, Richard's nowhere to be found. What the hell is he doing now? Oh, well, I guess I can't blame him for that. Hey, look, Pink Floyd. Maybe that means this movie lines up with Turkish Wizard of Oz. Alright, so anyway, long story short, Wong doesn't get the formula because it blows up, but considering I'm probably the only one who even remembers that that was what they were after at this point, I think that's good enough. Lung, you okay? Okay. Uh, I thought you were dead, you know that? I won't die so young. Wow. Tasteful way to end your movie there, Brucey. Also, I wouldn't be smiling if I were you, too. I think Bruce just blew up your ride home. So that's Challenge of the Tiger. It's cheesy, it's stupid, it makes absolutely no goddamn sense. And it's actually pretty fun. While it definitely can't hold a candle to a real Bruce Lee movie in terms of martial arts, or charisma, or plot coherence, it makes up for those things with a fast pace and a sheer sense of what the fuckery. From gratuitous nudity, to gratuitous fight scenes, to gratuitous bull killing, and gratuitous Richard Harrison mustachery, Challenge of the Tiger has everything. Well, everything except the real Bruce Lee, of course. But hey, in a movie this ridiculous and crazy, I can forgive that. So if you like your martial arts movies with a heavy dose of cheese, give this one a look. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. You will try if you like. <laughs> Dirty old man. <laughs> She's enjoying you.